Hi there, this is Amir again from simpletech.ca and in this win video I'm gonna talk about how to do mail merge and I'm gonna share it in 2003 how to do that and then I'm gonna show you how it is different in 2007. If you understand the concept here it will be very easy to understand how to do it in the office 2007 where they've only moved the buttons around. The idea is exactly the same. It's just that they've just moved the buttons in different places and they have a different steps to it. So let's get to mail merge. First I'll just talk about the basic concept behind it and then we'll start actually doing it. The best way to understand mail merge is first of all what is the use of it? Why would you want to know about it? Say for example you work for a nonprofit organization and then every year you need to send an invitation to all of your donors to asking them to come to your meeting. Now if you have a 1000 donor list you need to send out a thousand letters. Each and every individual will get exactly the same letter. The only thing that will be changing is the name and addresses of the people that the letter is going to. Now that is where mail merge comes into place. If you already have a list typed up in Excel or anywhere else with the people's names, addresses, then you don't need to waste your time doing it. You can use Mail Merge to merge your information from that file into your letter and then it will give out a 1000 letters automatically and it can also print envelopes for you with people's addresses already printed. So that's why mail merge is so powerful and very useful and to know where it can be used. So there are three parts to mail merge from the way I see it. Now I highly recommend that if you are really new to Microsoft Word and computers, give yourself some time, become familiar with Microsoft Word and computers before trying to understand mail merge. I just find that in my years of teaching that some people they find mail merge a little complicated. It is not complicated, so don't be afraid of it. Just give yourself enough time to let that concept sink in. So there are three parts to mail merge. The first part is the source data. That is the first file. Now this is the file where you actually have all your information for the contact list. It's your people's names, addresses, telephone numbers, or whatever. There is the second file which is why what I call the generic letter. Now this is where you just have one page where you decide what the information will be. So you decide that on the top I'm gonna have people's first name, last name, this is where I'm gonna have the city, the address, and this is where I'm gonna have the salutation like dear, mister, blah blah blah, and then the actual letter saying that you are invited to our annual donor meeting and please come with your checkbooks and stuff like that. And and then you merge the source file with the generic letter and then what you get is your final letter. So if you have a 100 people listed on the first file you end up having a hundred people as final letter. So you'll have hundred letters one after the other with the right people's names and addresses in each and every letter and then you can use the same source file to do your envelopes. So with that said, let's get to mail merge. To do that, you have to first of all start it. So you go to tools, letters and mailings, and then you start mail merge. When that happens, you see a small window that opens up on the side here. Now we need to decide what are we doing here. We are doing letters. So we it's already selected. We just click on it. And then click next on the bottom. It says step one of six. Click next. Now up here it's asking you a question about selecting the starting document. We are going to use this current document. If you already had one already typed up, you could use and open that file up and use that. In this case, we're going to go with the current document. Let's go to second step and it says next step, select recipients. That is, where is your list? Where is your 
source data. In this, you have three options. The first option, use an existing list. And the second option is select from Outlook contacts. And the third option is type a new list. So if you had addresses into your Microsoft Outlook, you could use that. In this case, we don't have anything, so we're going to use type a new list. So I click the third option. Now I need to create a list. So I click on create. Now this new window opens up. It kinds of looks familiar if you've ever entered information in a computer in a form. It has the title, first name, last name, and it just keeps going. Now, if you don't want to type all that information, you can just click on Customize. Now, you can decide what information you want and what information you don't want. So, for example, if I don't want the address line 2, I click on it and I can hit Delete. It will ask me, are you sure? I say yes. I can even click on, say, the home phone number. I don't need it. I can hit delete. For example, in, in Canada, we use the word province. So I could come here over state, click rename, and I can use the word province and click OK. You can also add new fields if it was appropriate for you. You could also move it up or down depending on what you were doing and where you wanted it. I'm just going to click OK. Now at this part, you start entering the information. So I'm going to come here. For the title, I can write Mr. I can even put a dot if I want. I can go to the next row. And I can put the first name, just make it up. Last name. So you go on typing this. Once you finish typing the first information, you can click on the new entry and then you can go to the second and the third. I'm just going to pause the video, enter at least four to five names and then I'm going to continue with it. So I've gone ahead and typed at least four names in here. So if I click on this first, I see the first, I click next for the second next for the third so I've got four different uh, names typed up the only thing I want to point out here is that in the title I've typed Mr. Mrs. and I put a period and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later now you can continue typing more and more I'm just going to stick with four right now so uh, when I'm done typing I can just click on close Now it is asking me to save the file. So this is the first file in our list. So this is the source data. This is the data file. Now it's highly recommended that you know where you are saving it. So I'm just going to go to my documents. I'm going to click on create a new folder and I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it something meaningful. So within my documents I'm creating a new folder called donor list and I'm going to type a name for the file donor list source data whatever you feel like I'm, I, I want to be as descriptive as possible and then I click save so now it shows me all the names that I've typed name of the company addresses and the country code and the zip codes. If I wanted to edit any one of them, I could click on it and use the button edit. And now I just can just click OK. So we've finished doing the first part, the first file, the source data. Now we need to go to the next step, which is Step 3 is write your letter and I'm going to click next. So this is now where you write your letter. 
So this is the second file, what I like to call the generic. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file right now. So I'm going to click on Save button. I'm going to go to the donor list. I might as well keep it all in one place. And I'm going to give it a file name. And I'm going to call donor generic letter. And click Save. Now, the most important thing up here is this toolbar up here, right there. This is called the Mail Merge Toolbar. If you don't see it, you have to go to View, Toolbar, and then click on Mail Merge. I'm going to stop this video at this point, and you can continue on with the part.